What's going on YouTube? We're here in Dubai and I'm very fortunate today to be taking you guys through a technique analysis of a training session that I did with Sarah Sigmundsdorf this week out here in Dubai, which is absolutely incredible. Now, if you don't know Sarah, she's one of the most amazing CrossFit athletes in the world. One of the OGs competed in the CrossFit games a hell of a lot of times and has even been on the podium and won multiple events there. She's one of the most liked CrossFit female athletes that exists purely because she's so friendly and loves her supporters and everyone that follows her. And I can tell you after meeting this person uh, in the flesh, she is as friendly as you see on the internet. And it was an absolute pleasure to train alongside her and help her out a little bit of her lifting this week. I'll just talk to you for our training session that we did first of all. She'd already done training session that morning. I jumped in for the afternoon training session and we started off with a squat session. We did three threes back squat at 85%. Mine was at 220 kilos and hers was at 110 kilos. Now. There's a couple of things we altered particularly in her squat. One of the things was her setup position. She used to unwrap the bar with quite a wide grip and used to lose quite a lot of tension in her mid to upper back when she was driving for a sticky point. So what I got her to do is actually narrow her grip when she unwrapped the bar to create more tension in her mid to upper back, which enabled her to drive better through the sticking point. The other thing that we kind of looked at was with her foot placement very slightly thinking about it, instead of driving her knees out, which was causing her to kind of drop the knees through a sticking point and lose tension. Think about spreading the floor so that she's engaging the glutes a little bit better, enabling her to keep her chest up a little bit better through her sticking point on the squat. We stopped her wavering around and elbows sort of flaring as she was coming through the sticking point. I always like a narrow grip when I'm squatting so that the elbow stays pinned into the side. And I try and maintain keeping my forearm in the same line as my truck whenever I move through the squat. And this helps me stop folding through any of the sticking points of the squat. We made that tweak with her, which I think was really helpful. Definitely helped her pump out the squats a little bit easier and those top weight. But the main component of our training session was the snatch complex. We did the TLZ competition barbell snatch complex, which is gonna be everyone's competing for around the world in next week remember if you want to compete in that competition you can enter for free i'll put the link below this video you can actually win the opportunity to have 12 weeks custom coaching and programming with me worth two and a half grand as well as the opportunity to have one of these technique analysis is done with yourself via zoom with me which would be super cool so make sure you go and check that out and enter that competition below but we'll get into the technique analysis what i want to do before we get started is just play the complex so you guys know what it is okay so the complex that we did was i'm just going to play it through so you can see it. it's one slash deadlift followed by it straight into a snatch and then from here we lower down to waist height and then we do a hang snatch that's the half done in my opinion and then from here we move into a snatch balance and then finish it off with an overhead squat so i'm going to break down this whole complex for you so we can get a great look at sarah's lifting now one thing that i want to show you before we particularly look at this complex was something that i noticed on one of her lighter ball up weights that she did really well and this is something that i think everyone should be incorporating when they're lifting so i just pulled up one of her lighter weights what i want you to notice is as she initiates the lift from the floor watch how she sets her shoulders back and down here when she's saying this is really important to create tension in the mid to upper back when we're initiating the movement so you can see how she pulls pulls her shoulders down into her back pocket. And I always like to feel as though when I'm in my set position, that I'm feeling like a little pinch underneath here in my lap. So the tension's there, but the arm then can stay loose and relaxed. And she did that really well, which is why I wanted to just show you that in her setup position. Not only that, but this helps her try and keep her chest up as best as possible in the lift and her eye line as well, so that she can really try and utilize the legs as best as possible in this initial phase of the lift. So. All in all, that initial setup position, really, really good. Now we'll get back to the full complex. One thing that I noticed with Sarah, she does have quite a wide stance in her setup position. And this does mean that her bum starts quite high, probably a little bit higher than normal in the lift. This causes, in the initial phase, her bum to rise a little bit early when she's initiating the movement. You'll then see that that causes the back to get quite parallel to the floor as she's getting to her knee. This puts a lot of the load here in her hamstrings and in her posterior chain in her back and not so much really in the quad, which is where I'd want to see the majority of the load being pushed away with in that first phase of the lift. When the legs tend to get a little bit straight, what this can cause is as we come to this point here, okay, if we were doing a full snatch, the load to be in the back. Now you'll notice this is just the deadlift component of the lift, but for me, whenever you're picking the bar up off the floor in a deck snatch grip deadlift, you want to do it exactly the same way you would do when you're snatching. So we'll see in a moment if she does the same thing when she snatches. So as she goes back down to the floor here, 
you'll see again we've mimicked that same position now where her back again is parallel to the floor and this then causes her when she gets to the knee again to see that same position happening so I would suggest that we do a snatch deadlifts to get her to pick it up the exact same way she would do when she snatches, which at the moment is a little bit high. So I'd like to see that bum come down a little bit lower. Now, as a result of her lifting her bum a little bit high here in this first phase of the lift, okay, and uh, you'll notice from here, the only thing that she can really do is either try to scoop her knees underneath the bar, which I don't like, or she's gonna use her back heavily in the lift here, which you can see she does. So the shoulders are starting to move now heavily back behind the bar in this direction as she hits extension. Now, what we'd want in this position in an ideal world is the shoulders to be slightly further over the bar until the legs start to straighten out, okay? So the trajectory of the bar then would be a slightly a little bit more vertical and should maximally use her leg a little bit better. Now, like I said, this is still an incredible technique, and this is one that she's lifted nearly 100 kilos with. It would just be a little bit of fine tuning or thinking about shoulder of the bar for longer or covering the bar for longer during this phase of the lift here, which potentially help her get a little bit more height on the bar, but more than anything, slightly better trajectory. Because we had the feet quite wide in the starts, it was interesting to see what she was gonna do with her feet into a catch position. She still manages to move them out wide into a receiving position, which is great. And I know that she's recovering from an ACL surgery on her knee. So again, this could be partly the reason why we're not necessarily seeing as much tracking forward with knees over toes into the bottom position, which is causing a little bit of the weight to be stuck into the heel in the catch position. But again, it's not the end of the world because she still does manage to find a good lockout position. One thing that I want you to notice with her arms as she comes into the receive, you'll see a little bit of instability here as she comes to catch. Now, her arms are kind of making this U shape here, whereas I'd want to see a little bit more external rotation here in the shoulder, which I think she would be able to do if we worked on the tracking of these knees being forward a little bit more and the torso being a little bit more upright in the receiving position. This is slightly more evident when we'll see her move into a hang in the moment. When I'm working through a complex of a snatch hang snatch, what I would then do after the set is bring my feet back in very slightly to again, be put them back in their most powerful position to drive in the full movement. As we lower into the hang, what she does do really well is use the legs. You see a lot of people when they do hang set, you see a lot of people hitch and then lean over. Sara does this really well. I love to see when you're initiating a hang movement, the legs moving at the same time the bar's coming down. This allows you to get into a really good position here where we've got a lot of leg bend or knee bend here to be able to drive up with the legs nice and vertically through the middle phase of the lift. And this is what I'd like to see her replicate in her snatch because at the moment when we saw the snatch, bomb was super high, but come back here at that position of the snatch. So here you see it's not the same as where we are in the hang where she loads the legs really well. So if we could get her to replicate this position of her snatch, again, I think we'd see some really good things happening. As she strikes up, she makes really good leg extension here. You can see her rising right up onto the toe and her eyes still pointing forward. And then she's just about to reach now with the elbows, keeping the bar nice and close through the middle phase of lift, which is really good to see. As she comes into a receiving position, the issues that we kind of highlight here with the weight being in the heels a little bit in the cap position, is highlighted and that again affects this lockout position with the arm and the stability a little bit further. So again, for me, if we worked on a slightly different setup position, I think we'd be able to sit her a little bit more upright in the catch and get that external rotation happening, which would really help with her lockout position. Unless you nail the snatch, sometimes you do have to sit there to stabilize it a little bit in the bottom position, which she does really well. But in an ideal world, what I'd like to see if that bar was coming down vertically on her, we wouldn't see the wobbling happening so much. And that comes due to the bar path as you come into the receive position. But she stands up out of that really well. Going into the snatch balance, I normally like to start my feet close and then get them moving out again into the snatch balance. She kind of leaves her feet where they are and stamps them. They do move out a little bit, but not a great deal. But one thing that you'll notice that she does really well is you see how she already locked out and in control of the bar here before she starts going down. This is important for a snatch balance, so you're in control when you change direction at the bottom part of the lift here. Now, being a crossed athlete, she's doing just what she needs to do for this to be classed as an illegal snatch balance, which is break parallel, which is 
brilliant. She gets through that nicely. And then what I love to see here is she takes a nice deep breath before she goes down into a bottom position, which is great, which allows her to load her legs the best she's done throughout this complex in the overhead position by letting her knees track a little bit further. That way the load can be taken in the quads here as she comes to stand up out of her bottom position. So all in all, this lift is pretty special and there's a lot of great things happening. A little couple of things that I would tweak her, which will make a huge impact, I think. And hopefully she'll get around to kind of introducing them maybe after this season or into the next season. And hopefully we can see Sarah snatch 100 kilos again, or if not a little bit more, which would be absolutely incredible. Uh, but I just want to say a massive thank you again, Sarah, if you do watch this video, it's incredible to train with you. Uh, like I said, more than happy to help you out a couple of these bits if you want it. For anyone else that's watched this technique analysis video and you thought, God, I'm doing some of those things as well. And Sunny, I'd love you to help me with minor things. Then I want to give you the opportunity today to hit the link below this video and book in a call with me. That call will be to discuss my 12 week custom coaching and programming where we'll start off with the deep dive analysis build you out a complete bespoke training program. And on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll get technique analysis and feedback from myself and the team, as well as weekly deep dive technique analysis calls like this that we do as part of a community, which will guarantee you over the next 90 days, fixing the struggles that you're currently having with your Olympic lifting, building you a technique that's gonna give you longevity and get a lot more enjoyment out of your workouts so you can start smashing RX. So you want to take that opportunity, just hit the link below this video and I'll look forward to chatting you through how I can help you start maximizing your results in your Olympic weight of thing. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Big love guys, I'll see you soon. I'm about to head back to Sydney now. Take care.